Hello and welcome back to another guide for Alien Stark Descent. My name is Saiken and today we're going to answer the question of what are the 10 things that I wish I knew before starting the game. My guides are usually very concise to the point, no BS, no repetition, so buckle up and let's jump right into the 10 tips. Tip number one, watch out for Hive Aggression. Hive aggression is something that I fully underestimated when starting to play the game. It is displayed in the top right corner when you're on the tactical map. It uh, starts at uh, nothing, goes over easy, medium to hard and was the bane of most of my missions. It cannot be reduced once it is accumulated and over the accumulation it starts to spawn more and more aliens will result in a faster detection rate and a higher amount of onslaughts that are happening and quite frankly will start a spiral of doom whereas more aliens will drain more resources and at some point you simply need to evacuate. In order to play the game the way it wants to be played you need to avoid aliens at all costs and just use stealth mechanics in order to bypass most of them. So I wish I knew that before starting the game. Tip number two, many areas, specifically weldable rooms as well as larger rooms that are preparation areas for fights are not roamed and offer an unlimited amount of time to prepare. That can be used together with the command point system to place as many mines as you want. Warning, for fair warning in this case, mines trivialize the game and should be used sparingly I've used them quite heavily on my blind playthrough and if I had one regret for that playthrough it would potentially be the overutilization of them. They are super uh, strong in their inner explosion radius, they are dealing as much damage as needed to either initially kill each of the tier 1 aliens outright or injure them so much that they need to limp on and with unlimited amounts it just increases your firepower so that is something i wish i knew beforehand tip number three the command point regeneration ability of the sergeant's stack unlike medics extra hit points or the gunner's supportive fire uh, the ability of the medic to increase the regeneration of uh, the command points actually stacks on top of it, it's a radio backpack also stacks. So with two to three sergeants alone, you're already rocking five to six command points. If you put teamwork on top of it, you can easily reach up to seven or eight and the regeneration can be twice as and thrice as much as it normally would. That allows you to use more out of combat abilities such as sniping shots or the ability to plant mines and we've just talked about how overpowered they are. So very strong ability, I wish I knew that before starting the game. Tip number four, let's focus on hit chances. I wish I knew how hit chances or how important they are. The base hit chance of any marine is 35% out of the gate. If you are choosing the sharpshooter trait times three, that adds another 15%. If you use accuracy, which is a common trait that everybody can use, that adds another 5%. And certain classes gain over time in addition to aiming. Uh, the gunner, for instance, gets another trait uh, for their class specifically for focus fire. Long-winded way of saying you can get up to 75% uh, aiming. If you stack that uh, with the uh, dead eye skill that allows to have crit chances appear more often, 13, 25 and 40% respectively, you are up for a positive awakening as your characters all of a sudden will hit not only more than double the time, but they will also crit very, very often. That will increase substantially so the DPS and as such reduces uh, the length of the combat. You can reposition faster, you will take less wounds to begin with and overall the stress level is also more moderate. So pro tip, invest in your ability to hit. 
Tip number five, I wish I knew that stress in this game was a major problem. And I mean that literally inside of the game and figuratively outside of the game. Stress will increase the ability of your characters to accumulate traumas and traumas have nasty side effects. On top of that, stress is a stacking mechanic. Some of uh, the stress abilities that are acquired once characters are in the stress wheel cause further stress, so it's an escalating mechanic that needs to be taken care of with regular rests. That, however, will be less of a problem in the later parts of the game. I wish I knew also that the sergeant, won the, once they hit level 6, uh, gain a specific ability that allows you to ignore any combat related stress for 30 seconds. Use it wisely for a combat point, but use it regularly so that you are not ending up with maximum amounts of stress. Tip number six, special abilities are tied to the characters that have the respective weapon equipped. What that means is each of your characters can use either the shotgun, the mine, the flamethrower, the RPG or the sniper rifle. Make sure that you understand who has selected which of the weapons as it will become important later on. Specifically with the sniper rifle, you would want to have a character that is centered in your team so that you are not having problems with positioning them. Your initial loadout of the five characters determines also the position within the squad of Marines, which means if you find uh, someone with a sniper rifle, for instance, you want to put them into the middle of uh, the team. That way it's easier around the doors and other parts where you need a line of sign in order to interact with the character. Equally, you want to have uh, the shotguns maybe on uh, the edges and the RPG also sort of in the middle. That's at least how I played it and it worked very well. Tip number seven, tier two aliens are much harder than normal aliens. I wish I knew that before starting the game. Tier two aliens, more specifically Praetorians and Chargers are aliens that typically spawn at higher levels of hive aggression. And not only do they offer you one experience when they come and are killed, but also they are causing a lot of havoc when they are spawning. They are immune against sniper headshots and therefore cannot be easily dispatched and they will have their own way of annoying the player. I wish I know that the charger, uh, for instance, always uh, comes in and wants to slam the ground. So having someone on overwatch fire or suppressive fire will actually slow the character down and make them take damage. So you want to cancel that when uh, the charger is coming in and move out of the area. You alternatively also want to use an RPG to kill him. I wish I also knew that the Praetorian aliens are particularly nasty aliens as they are continuing to wait around. So it is advised that you are trying to kill them as soon as you can see them. Suppress a fire um, and an RPG are working wonders against uh, them is uh, the moment that they are fleeing they will wait just in front of the door and mind you they will wait minutes at end uh, just in order to uh, um, spot you out again and cause another hunt so i wish i knew how they would function so that i would have been more efficiently uh, fighting them tip number eight the arc does not trigger aggro from the hive nor do sentry guns when they are left alone. Only when your soldiers are being spotted, the, ha uh, the aggro will be triggered. And you can use that uh, to your advantage. In particular, I would suggest you to put a couple of motion sensors uh, right next to the ARC. And whenever you're not there, overload one of them so that all of the aliens are being drawn to the ARC. The ARC will have unlimited ammunition and will just kill every single living being without furthering the hive aggression. Alternatively, you might uh, want to send the ARC from one location to another if it can be sent to multiple locations and it will kill everything on its way. Rinse and repeat to just clear out uh, entire parts of the map. Be careful though, the 
um, sentry guns can be uh, driven over by the ARC. And a word of advice is an additional, say, tip A to B. Sentry guns, as well as your drone, if left alone, once you change the area, will automatically be considered to be destroyed. Be very careful about that. You do not want that to happen. On the note of tip number eight, I come to tip number nine, how to deal with aggression levels in general. And this is again a tip with two kind of subcategories. Number one, know that once you have reached a higher level of aggression, you might as well want to go all out. I wish I knew that tier two aliens and onslaughts grant experience as long as you kill them, not when the ARC kills them. So it is possible that since the doom clock of the game only sets in after mission number five to deploy to all of the previous missions often as often as you like matter of fact use a high amount of xenos to uh, gather xeno samples and use all of the onslaughts and tier two aliens to level your characters that way you will have a significantly level team up to two or even three swats of level 10 marines halfway in the game. It trivializes it to a degree, but it is a tactic that you can use in order to just grind the aliens. On a more particular note, if you want to do the exact opposite, which is stay under cover, a tip 9b, so to speak, would be to use the elevators or any form of um, breaking of the current zone in order to stop the hunt. Hunts are being stopped once you are going into an elevator, therefore you can stay undetected longer and can stay in that easy mode a little bit longer. However, keep in mind, as I said, both the drones as well as the sentries are actually dying once you're leaving the area and if you leave them unattended. So that's a bit of a trade-off. And finally, tip number 10, the Doom's Clock of uh, the game is very much manageable. The Doom's Clock for starters can be disabled, but if you play the normal version, it will be integral part of the game. However, the game does a bad job in explaining how bad or how pressing it really is. The reality is you do have 20 days for five and a half missions. So every single mission really has three days of deployment and then you still get a few more days spare. Uh, I finished the game on the hardest difficulty with almost 10 days left, not knowing how severe the Doom's Clock really will be. My word of advice in that case is use the time prior to the Doom's Clock as much as possible, use all of the events, get as much personal as uh, possible because you basically have uh, all the time in the world. Once the doom clock hits, don't get uh, too um, headed uh, in the direction of uh, needing to make deployments in one go. You still have plenty of time to finish the game. I wish I knew that in advance before starting the game. And that's it. Those are the 10 tips all around uh, what would I want to have known before starting Aliens Dark Descent. If those are helpful, then it's your obligation, Marine, to leave a comment down below and <coughs> perch that like button from all of the Xeno filth. I want a clean shot onto that plus like button. Thanks a lot and have a good one. Bye bye.